Uh, Minister, we welcome this bill and I welcome the opportunity to have a debate on it today. Um, what we've seen over the last you know, couple of years are it's, it's the impact um, and the huge community and societal cost to uh, the, the prices that we've been seeing. We've had record energy prices for consumers. We've had record levels of energy poverty, record levels of disconnections. Um, and at the same time as that was happening and that incredible impact on our communities and on individuals, we've also seen record profits for energy companies. And I think that is a clear illustration that, that the energy market that we have is not robust enough to deal with external shocks, um, shocks such as Ukraine. Um, but I think it is not just Ukraine that is causing these record issues for people. There are many, many other factors um, and ones that are within our ability to preempt um, or, or to try and mitigate against. Um, you know, uh, we, we have a very, very insecure energy system in this country and it's quite isolated from the rest of Europe and I think because of that um, we may need to look at it with a very different lens um, from, than, than we would be applied to the, the more standard markets across across Europe or the energy systems. Um, and I do think there is an opportunity at this point now when we are making shifts in our energy system, we are moving away from the traditional fossil fuels to a more electrified um, energy system and energy market. I do think there's an opportunity to look at how our energy markets are regulated. And I understand that that is part of the EU discussions, but I hope that this government is strongly participating in those discussions and uh, ensuring that uh, a very much an islanded and isolated system like ours is getting the, the full uh, recognition of that at a European level. Um, so that we do have a market that works for people, works for consumers rather than for companies, which is what is the current situation. Um, I'm going to, my, my uh, discussion today is very much going to focus on, on the bill and on the regulations. I hope some of the things that I mention, I hope you take them into account uh, as we go through this legislative process. Um, I've, there's, a, there's a few issues that I think could, could be um, addressed and broadened out. I think the scope of the bill is too narrow. Um, I think there was an opportunity, you know, if you look at the EU directive and the regulations, there was an opportunity to actually expand on what this bill could have achieved. One of the things I would like to highlight with you is the time frame that was set down. Um, the bill only relates to, and indeed I know the regulations relate to the period from December 22 to June 23. That is a very, very short time frame. Um, and even within the EU regulations, it repeatedly no, uh, discusses how the electricity markets and very high prices were, were observed since September 2021. Um, you know, it also talks about extreme and lasting price increases observed since February 2022. So I think that the six months that the EU and, and indeed that this bill talks about is not long enough. It is not a long enough length of time. Um, energy prices in this country have been rising since early in 2021. We have had that impact on people since that time period as well. And indeed, our prices are still incredibly high. And therefore, this bill will not do anything to, to cap or to, uh, I suppose, pull back some of the profits that the companies will be making on prices uh, that people are facing and being hit with at the moment. Um, now, I'm not sure whether it is within the, the remit of the government to extend that period. Um, I do think there is some flexibility within the EU uh, regulation, though, because it does talk about, you know, that there are ways of derogation from the union rules. Um, and I would ask that the government seek some advice on that to see whether or not that six month period can be extended because I think that will be a very, very worthwhile thing to do. We need to make sure that no one profits, that no company profits on the back of a war and on the back of exploiting ordinary consumers when it comes to electricity prices. Um, energy is an absolute necessity for life. It is not something that people can do without and it's really, really important um, that we do not see any excess profits 
uh, on the back of that of, of people suffering in that regard. Um, I would also just, you know, I think I, I spoke earlier on about our energy market and how we could have actually, um, you know, other ways that we could have addressed uh, these high prices. And I just, I do note that there were a range of tools and measures that could have been implemented in Ireland. This windfall tax is one of them, and as I said, it is, it is welcome. You know, if you look at all the other European countries, um, retail price regulation was something that was open to us, wholesale price regulation, um, the mandate to state-owned firms. There was, there was a whole lot of different measures that were open to Ireland under the EU rules and ones that we did not apply. Um, Ireland and Finland were the only two countries indeed out of all the European countries that did not bring in retail price regulation. Um, countries like France and Spain had wholesale, wholesale price regulation. So I think look, there, there were other options that were open to the government to try assist and I think uh, that the government you know, could have and should have actually um, investigated and examined those options to see whether or not um, they could have brought measures in that would, that would help. One other thing that's mentioned in the regulation is the um, requirement that member states should endeavour to reduce their total gross electricity consumption for all, from all consumers. Um, that is actually part of these regulations and, and, uh, and essentially a condition of it. Um, and I just feel that, that that's one area that uh, this government has absolutely failed to address. And when I'm talking about reducing energy consumption, I'm not talking about individual homeowners because, you know, the price pricing did that essentially for, for, for many people. And we've seen, indeed, a great reduction in electricity use and emissions from uh, the residential sector. But I'm actually talking about the electricity consumption of the large energy users, such as data centres. And um, there has been no curb or no aim to, to, to control that. And I think that's one area that we have never really gotten to the bottom of is the actual level of pressure that the energy and electricity demand from those large data users, the level of pressure that that was actually placing on our prices here. Because it does, I mean, you know, supply and demand, more demand for a product such as our service like electricity, the higher the price is going to be. Um, and I think that that's something that the government should look into. And I would ask, Minister, I, I've, I've sought some clarity on this from uh, the CRU and um, from various departments, and it doesn't seem to be something that is really under investigation. But I do think it's really important that we look at the impact of data centres, not just on our energy consumption, on our emissions, but also on uh, pricing, because that pricing um, impacts on and is often uh, paid for by residential homes. Um, one thing that hasn't been included in the bill, and I think it's really important that it is included, is the concept of ring, ring fencing. I think the, the, the funds and the money from this um, windfall tax should be ring fenced, and it should be in, in the legislation that it will be ring fenced and used in a targeted fashion as per the uh, regulation. I mean, the regulation, the EU regulation says that uh, that the money should be um, collected and directed towards those most impacted. I don't believe that the government has gotten that targeting right. I don't think you've targeted the supports enough. And I've repeatedly spoken in, in this chamber and, and elsewhere about, you know, the number of holiday homes that received 600 or 800 euro credit um, as a result of that, that uh, the uh, scheme that was brought in, um, I, you know, that's an absolute waste of, of taxpayers' money. And I think that it's really important that whatever money is taken in through this measure is directed to those people who need it most. Um, and that should be something that should be in the legislation. And the targeting of that should also be spelled out in the legislation. Um, one element of the bill that I, I welcome and I was quite interested to see was the... Um, the fact that the hedging element um, from these companies will actually be notified to the CRU as the competent uh, authority. Um, 
I, that's really welcome. What I would ask actually is that it is not just limited to this bill and to this particular period in time. I think it's really important that the CRU has the ability to examine and monitor and investigate the hedging um, and, and the, the contractual arrangements of these companies on an ongoing basis. I think what we've seen, and indeed the central bank has said this week that the Irish prices are out of line and that is because the energy companies are failing to, to uh, transfer the reductions to consumers. We need to have a monitoring of those hedging practices um, and I think the CRU is best placed to do that and I think the fact that you have now given them the powers in this bill is really welcome. It does need to be there as a um, not an emergency measure or an emergency power given to the CRU, but a standard power that they have all the time, um, and indeed that they monitor all the time. And I also think that there needs to be transparency in relation to these. So nowhere in the bill um, is there any indication that the profits being made by various companies will be made public. I think there needs to be reporting on that. Um, and I think it needs to be publicly available because every single person who has paid really high energy prices and electricity prices over the last two years should be entitled to know which companies were profiting. And that should be publicly available. Um, and I think that's a really, really important aspect of, uh, of what this bill could achieve. So I would ask that you would look into that, Minister. Um, I think that pretty much covers covers everything. Um, as I said, I do welcome this bill and I think it is important that it is um, that the government is, is moving on it. It could be stronger, it could be more robust and it could be sort of better future proofed. Um, and I think uh, you know I would welcome a discussion with the Minister on that. Uh, hopefully he can take some of these suggestions on board. Thank you. You're